guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new, thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Courtney. Today I have got a general home decor item for you. It is a DIY, kind of like the shiplap and bead one that I did a couple of weeks ago for you guys, um, that you can change with the seasons and holidays. So I really, really like it. This is something I've made um, for my guest room because that is the next big room in my house that's getting a renovation. So, um, <clears throat> or a makeover or update, whatever you wanna call it. So here is the timestamp to get straight into today's DIY. For the rest of you, um, quickly I wanted to talk about the mini series I am planning on doing. So I did ask you guys about it and the majority of you said yes, you would like to see it. I'm gonna call it the DIY Diaries because it's basically me just brain dumping and sharing my feelings, my pros, cons, tips, tricks, suggestions, comments, whatever, about certain topics. So there will be four videos in the series. The topics will be glue guns, chalk paint, specialty scissors, and gadgets you didn't know you needed for the craft room, um, as well as a requested video, which I'm adding Silhouette versus Cricut, because I do have a Cricut maker and a lot of you guys are asking me questions about that. So that is my plan. Um, about a week before I film, I will just put up a question about the topic, just a general question. And basically, if you have any questions about that topic or want to know something specific, Feel free to leave them in the comments and I will do my best to address those during the video. As well as if you've learned something about the topic that you feel like everybody should know, please do share those as well. And I will do my best to put that in the video and give you a shout out to let people know that it was your suggestion. So um, yeah, I guess that's it. So I'm excited to do this mini series. Again, I'm just gonna work it in between all my other DIYs. And it's just, you know, everything I personally have learned over years and years and years of crafting. So, um, all right. Well, without further ado, let's get into today's DIY. Let's go. All right. So I picked up this six pack of wood slats from Walmart. I'm going to go through and kind of pick the four pieces that I like the best because I'm staining it. I did want the wood to have some character to it. If you don't have this, then you can certainly just use scrap wood or you can get some of the Dollar Tree signs and break them down. This wood is very soft and easy to cut. So once you um, pick your pieces of wood, three of the pieces are gonna stay as is, the size exactly how they are, and then you're gonna need to cut one of them to make the ends. So all I'm doing is just kind of positioning this up and then I will just mark this and cut it with my miter saw. Like I said, this is super soft wood. If you just have one of the little hand saws from Dollar Tree, that will work, a little hacksaw. You could probably even use a box cutter because like I said, it's super soft. So once I get these cut, I will be ready to stain the pieces of wood. All right, before I stain it, I am just gonna take this uh, little hand sander here and just kind of, especially the pieces that I cut, just hit it a little bit with 220 grit sandpaper just to smooth off any edges as well as the ends of my boards, making sure they're all pretty smooth, which they are, and then I will be ready to stain it. So I am just going to be using the Rust-Oleum Sun Bleached stain. I like this stain. It's kind of a light gray and um, it dries very, very quickly. They advertise it dries in an hour and I find that to be true. So I'm just going to grab a rag and stain my pieces and then I'll set them aside to dry. Okay, once my pieces were dry, this is what it looks like with just one coat of the stain. And now here is where I was trying to decide what I wanted to do with my box. Um, I have the white Waverly chalk paint as well as my brown cream wax. Now this piece right here, you might notice um, there's lettering on the bottom, but I knew this would be the bottom of my box, so I didn't bother sanding that off. But right now what I'm doing is, since it's the bottom and it's not gonna show, I'm just taking some of the brown to see if that's the look I want. And then I'm also going to add some of the white chalk paint to see if that's the look I want. So um, I'm gonna mess around a little bit doing this. And then ultimately I decide to go ahead and dry brush it with some white chalk paint and white chalk paint only. And 
And like I said, I decided to do just the white chalk paint. So I'm just going to dry brush white chalk paint all over the sides, um, kind of hitting the edges and the corners um, a little bit darker than the rest of it. And I'll do both sides of these and then let them dry. And here's a quick glimpse of what they look like when I'm all finished dry brushing them with the white paint. Now it is time to assemble. So I will be using Gorilla Wood Glue along with my glue gun to kind of help tack the corners, but you certainly could use E6000. You could use just your glue gun if you want to, but I wanted this to have a permanent fix. I didn't want it falling apart on me, so that is why I'm taking time to use the wood glue. Um, there are also wood glue glue sticks, which I will be talking about in the glue gun video when I start the DIY Diaries series. Series. So uh, yeah, that's a thing if you didn't know. But um, like I said, I'll be using the wood glue and just a little tip here, pay attention to the wood glue that you have because there is clear wood glue, which obviously dries clear. And then there's one that's natural, which will dry kind of a woodish color. So I'll show you what I'm talking about in a minute. Mine is the natural drying one, but um, I was mindful of that and where it might show is inside the box. So it really won't matter. But um, just keep that in mind if you are using wood glue because if it seeps out on the outside and you don't wipe it off you will have a little bit of a tint of wood so I'm just gonna go through assemble my box use my clamps and get it all put together and then let it dry all right so I've got my sides here I've got the clamps holding it and now what I'm gonna do is go in with my wood glue on the inside like I said I know it's not really gonna show very much and I find that when you're trying to cram wood glue into an area like this, the best tool you can use is a foam brush. Um, it wipes off the extra, but also pushes it into the crevice. So I'm just gonna do this here, kind of get it sealed up, and then this will dry for a little bit, and then I'll add the ends to this little box. All right, so now I'm going to start gluing on my ends. And basically all I'm gonna do is take some of my wood glue and put it around the edges, not on the top part, obviously, and then put a little bit of hot glue in the corners here to um, tack it on and then just stick the two ends on. And then again, let it dry. Um, I am gonna set it up kind of here on its bottom to kind of put pressure on that end. And then um, I will set something on the top of it to apply the pressure. And I'll show you what that looks like in just a second, if you have no idea of what I'm trying to explain here. So again, with the wood glue and then my little foam brush, wipey wipey. And yeah, you guys get the process by now. Right, and I wanted to put my clamp on here, but it needed to be propped up. So that's what it looks like standing up and I'm just using my handy dandy glue gun to hold up my clamp. Use what you have people, use what you have. All right, let's keep going. All right, I very quickly wanted to show you what the box looks like. Um, here it is all dry. And on the inside here, if you can kind of tell where there's tinting right here where it's a little bit darker, I'm not doing a very good job showing you. You can kind of see the brown in that corner right there. That's the natural color of wood glue. So that's what I was trying to tell you in the beginning. Just be mindful of that. But like I said, I knew it would be on the inside of the box and not visible, so I wasn't worried about it. Now the next part of this project is what I would like to call DIY fail time. So my original plan is I really wanted metal clips. I just thought that look would be really cute. I picked this pack up from Dollar Tree, but realized they were way too big. So then I was like, okay, I need to come up with another plan. So I had these little mini clips that I got from Dollar Tree and I thought, okay, that would be cute to clip them like this, but I was still very determined to get the metal clip. Now I had two of these um, frames from Dollar Tree that I believe are kind of coveted because people say they can't find them. 
Um, yeah, I had two of them, had a plan for these for a different DIY, but I noticed they had the perfect size metal clip on them. So what did I do? I destroyed um, this one. Yeah, I sure did. And I got the metal clip off. It worked great. So I was like, okay, well, this is what I'll do. So I have the metal clip and I was gonna glue it on there with E6000, but then I realized, you know what, this wood is so soft and I have some thumbtacks from Dollar Tree that are silver that will not only cover the little hole, but also put these in in case I ever decide to take them off. Ta-da, I can take them off with no issues. So I just kind of pushed it in, hammered it in very easily. And then everything was going great until I got to the second frame. And let's just say I not only destroyed the frame, but I also destroyed the metal clip. So there you go, guys. That was my original plan. But let's just move on to what I actually ended up doing here. But I did want to share that with you in case you like that look better. All right. And another quick little idea. You could just use the thumbtacks if you like that look. So that's another option. So I knew that I was gonna go ahead and use these little clothespins that I got from Dollar Tree. And you can angle them like this, which will allow your little banner to kind of hang higher up on the side of the box. Or you can put them straight up and down, which will have your banner a little bit closer to the bottom of the box. So one thing about these clothespins is they are cheap and they break and they fall apart very, very easily. So I'm going to attach them with hot glue because that way I know if they break, I can easily get it off and put a new one on. But if you want it more permanent, then go ahead and use the wood glue um, to attach your clips to the box. Okay, so now what to put inside the box? Dollar Tree, no, not Dollar Tree, Target Dollar Spot has all these really cute little bud vases in different colors right now. So I got these clear ones because that's what I'm gonna use right now. And then I thought the yellow ones would be fun for summer, but you certainly could just put greenery in these. For summertime, I am planning to fill it with rocks and one of the Dollar Tree um, cactuses, or maybe two of them, I'm not quite sure. But for now, I am going to um, just use these glass bud vases. And I had these leftover flowers from when I made my wreaths for the front doors of my craft room. So I'm kind of just tweaking this flower. It's a little sad and kind of pushing up the petals. And then I'm gonna add some little leaves to it. And these will be the flowers that I put in my bud base. All right, and so now I'm going to work on my little banner that I will be putting up for Easter. I decided to use just a piece of this burlap lace uh, ribbon from Dollar Tree, and I'm just showing you here some different options. You can use stencils. I've got this really cute set of stamps from back when Stampin' Up! was like really, really popular. So I'm gonna pull out the little bunny and eggs out of that. I've got ombre ink, black ink, and originally I was gonna try with the stencils and using paint, but they just weren't sticking very well to the fabric. So I ended up just going ahead and stamping on Happy Easter in black ink, and then I did an egg, a bunny, and then an egg. Now, if you didn't want to use this burlap ribbon, you could just use craft paper. You could use just the plain burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree. You could use white paper, scrapbook paper. You can make a little pennant, miniature pennant um, banner and hang it from the two little clothespins and just have cute festive little pennant banner. So there's a lot of options. You don't have to do these type of banners, but I'm gonna mess around with this for a little bit and then I'll show you how it turns out.
Okay, and here it is. I'm almost finished um, stamping on my Happy Easter in my little egg bunny egg. And then it will be ready to clip up to my little box. And I'm planning on for each season and holiday doing just a variety of little banners. Um, I'm probably going to make a little pennant one for summer that has pinks and yellows, just fun colors. And after looking at this um, for a little while, I realized that because I positioned my clothespins, like I mentioned earlier, straight up and down, it pushed my banner down. And there's this kind of space there, if you can see it at the top of my box. So I'm going to wipe off my stamps really quick. Quickly, and then I decided I think I needed to add something a little more to the box to cover up that blank space. Okay, my stamps are all wiped off with baby wipes. So now I'm just going to take some hot glue and stick it on my twine on the back of the box and just lightly anchor it right there. And then I'm going to wrap it around three times, just kind of tucking it behind the little part of the clip. So it's going to go around very nicely three times and then I will secure it in the back with some more hot glue. Right, and that is all good to go so now on the front I decided I'm going to add just a little bow and I actually have different thicknesses of twine so this is a little bit thicker than what I wrapped around it and I'm just going to tie a little bow and then hot glue it to the center of the box. Alright, and now that the box is all done, now comes the part about figuring out what to put inside. So you could put some of these little green plants. I got this from the Target Dollar Spot at Christmas time. That would look cute. You could do some greenery and a flower. You could come fill it with eggs since it's Easter. You could just fill it with candy. You could fill it with straws. You could fill it with anything. And here is my final product. I'm looking very forward to changing out these little banners. And like I said, this will be in my guest room. So when different guests come, I'll probably put a little welcome Diane or whoever's coming sign on the front. It's very versatile. And again, you can change it out through the seasons or just flip it around and use the back and use it plain if you want to. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. I hope you're having a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.